An elderly man named Aaron rose early in the morning, took his donkey and hurried to leave the house while his wife was not looking. Next we see Jan, a veterinarian, tending to farm animals, while his wife Jetta is giving a presentation to an audience. However when Jetta received a note, she was forced to interrupt her speech. She immediately came to her mother Sinny, who was crying because her 89-year-old husband Aaron had suddenly passed away. Sinny is sure he had dementia, which is why he left home, but Jan disagrees. In his opinion, Aaron was in great shape. However, no one here is interested in Jan's opinion. Jan was upset to learn that a year ago Sinny threw away Aaron's rifle, which meant a lot to him. But Sinny is convinced that the thing is useless and dangerous. Sinny never consulted her husband and did everything her way. Jan and Jetta visited the funeral home, where the employee told them about their various services. However, Jan said that they are interested in cremation. Jetta objected because her mother, who wants to visit the husband every day, decided otherwise. For Jan this was an unpleasant surprise, as they should first and foremost consider Aaron's wishes. This led to a marital dispute. Jan believes that because of his wife, Aaron lived a completely meaningless life. That is precisely why Jan wants to do at least something for his deceased father-in-law. The entire family gathered for the farewell ceremony. Jetta didn't like her son Peter's jacket, and she asked her mother to bring the father's jacket, not allowing the son to say even a word. It was time to deliver the farewell speech. Peter said that grandfather Aaron was married to grandmother Sinny for 63 years, and now he was finally free. Jan couldn't hold back a smile. Of course the wife did not carry out Aaron's last wish for cremation. Jan was not willing to accept this. Jetta for her part is puzzled as to why the father walked such a great distance. After the farewell ceremony, the women talked about how men understand nothing in this life. That's why women should decide everything. After all, Jan has made arrangements with a local laborer to carry out the father-in-law's last will. It's not entirely legal and ethical, but Jan is determined to see it through. A girl with a camera witnessed it. Later, the family gathered at home to remember Aaron. Jetta is still puzzled as to why the father left the house. Sinny thinks she should have kept a better eye on her husband, but Jan is sure that's the problem. He understands that if nothing changes, he awaits the same fate as Aaron. At home, Jan as usual agrees with his wife on everything. When he wanted to eat a cookie, Jetta said he would be eating apple pie. She also placed a pillow under his back and brought him tea, even though he didn't want any. Jan couldn't object to Jetta, who believes she knows everything better than her husband. Meanwhile Mark, the ex-husband of Lisbeth, daughter of Jan and Jetta, came to spend time with her son. Lisbeth now has a new boyfriend Eric, but she still misses Mark, who chose another woman over her. Jan was going to Sinny's house to check if Aaron's donkey is alright. The wife made him change his pants into jeans so they wouldn't get dirty. Jan is happy for any excuse to run away from home. He is still angry with Sinny for refusing to fulfill Aaron's last wish. But Sinny said that men themselves do not know what they want. Among Aaron's belongings, Jan found an album. It turned out that Aaron dreamt of traveling and missed his old life. Jetta arrived because her husband forgot his jacket at home. Jan asked if it's true that Aaron was planning to go on a journey. Sinny called it nonsense and said that she always knew how to stop her husband. Perhaps it was on that fateful day that Aaron left because he wanted to fulfill his dream. Jetta said that it was thanks to her mother that the father lived to be 89. But Jetta has no idea that her husband considers this not a life, but a curse. In the evening, Lisbeth who has always returned late and told Eric that she was going on a two-day business trip. However, Eric did not believe her, thinking she wanted to meet her ex-husband. Jan wanted to go to his favorite cafe, but the wife didn't let him go alone. Besides, she doesn't like that cafe, so they went to another one. Jetta also informed him that they have a doctor's appointment at 5. Jan categorically doesn't want this, saying he can decide when to see a doctor. But his wife doesn't want to hear anything about it. At the appointment, Jetta didn't let her husband get a word in, telling the doctor about all her husband's problems. When Jetta went to the bathroom, Jan met the son's wife Ilsa. It turned out that they were having trouble having a baby. Ilsa is very upset because of this. In the evening, Jetta's colleagues came over. She kept talking, not allowing her husband to express his opinion. After dinner, Jetta was unhappy that her husband was so unsociable. Jan suggested that maybe they should get a divorce. But Jetta took it as a joke, saying that they were made for each other. In Jetta's opinion, the husband couldn't handle any problem without her. Meanwhile, Eric is spying on Lisbeth, who indeed was meeting colleagues at a restaurant. In the evening, he came to her hotel, offering to spend time together. Lisbeth was surprised by such a sudden visit. In the morning, Jetta continues to instruct her husband, saying he does everything wrong. And this goes on forever. Jan feels it's a dead-end situation. A little more, and his nerves will give out. When Jan is going to work, his wife says to take warm clothes. 
And this was far from the only advice from her. Jan was very surprised when a woman suggested her goat had dementia. He had never heard of animals suffering from this disease. However, this case prompted Jan to come up with a brilliant idea. Perhaps he should pretend to have Alzheimer's, and then the wife would change her attitude towards him. Upon returning home, Jan continued to contemplate his plan. When Jetta asked him to trim the bushes in the yard, he asked when they would buy it. Jetta was shocked as her husband had been trimming these bushes for 25 years. After that, she asked her husband to pay the bills, but Jan of course had other plans. He packed the money in an envelope and wrote a note saying it needed to be delivered to a major. In the morning, Jan started preparing a smoothie from raw eggs and allegedly planned to meet with his parents, although they had long passed away. Jetta was bewildered. Later at the store, Jan pretended to choose a bicycle, but then after thanking the seller, he just stole it and put the envelope in the mailbox. Ilsa brought her husband breakfast in bed, saying that his test results had improved, which meant they would soon realize their dream. When the doorbell rang, Jetta received the letter and found out that instead of paying the bills, her husband had done some foolishness. Meanwhile, Jan began not to trim but to saw the bushes. Jetta didn't have time to do anything because the police arrived and said that her husband had stolen a bicycle. Jetta realized that she had to take her husband to the doctor right away. When they entered the elevator, a woman wanted to let them go ahead, but Jan just pushed her. At the appointment, the doctor asked Jetta not to answer questions for her husband and asked the patient what his name was. Jan, pretending to be perplexed, said he was not that well educated. In the end the doctor asked Jetta to leave because she wouldn't stop talking. Later, Jetta told her son that his father possibly had Alzheimer's. Peter thought they should fulfill any of his wishes before it's too late. Before going to university, Jetta explained to her husband which medications he should take. She also forbade Jan to go to work from now on. When his wife had left, Jan went to his favorite cafe and studied the route that Aaron was planning to walk. The relationship between Lisbeth and Eric is becoming more and more strained. On leaving for work, Lisbeth told him not to wait for her, as she wanted to go to a bar and unwind. Not finding Jan at home, concerned Jetta and Sinny called the police, but soon he arrived, saying he had been with his parents. Sinny believes that Jetta should get rid of this load. Relaxing with colleagues at a bar, Lisbeth saw 12 missed calls from Eric. At home he made a scene, suspecting her of infidelity. Lisbeth is not going to tolerate such behavior. At night, Jetta woke up and found the husband missing. All this time he had been knocking on the neighbor's door as if it were his house. In the end Jetta decides to put Jan in the hospital, believing that it will help him. Jetta promised her husband that she would visit him every day. At the same time she feels guilty, but sees no other way. When Jetta left, Jan told the truth to the doctor, who is his old friend. Anton doesn't understand why Jan wouldn't just divorce Jetta, but he said it's impossible. Jetta loves him too much and would never let go. Jan met the other patients, each of whom suffers from Alzheimer's. All these people say strange things. Jan treats each of them with responsiveness and warmth. He's just glad for a chance to get away from his wife, who tends to control all aspects of his life. It turns out that the food here is quite tasty. In the evening, the patients all watch television together, even though no one except Jan understands what's going on. All the conversations are very pessimistic, but Jan even finds it amusing. The remaining evening passes peacefully and slowly. At night, Jan couldn't sleep because the other patients were rebelling against the staff. Jetta also can't sleep, missing her husband. However when she came to visit him at the hospital, she saw that he was doing quite well here. Jan was not too pleased to see her. Jetta clearly felt uncomfortable here. Later, Anton told Jan that according to the results of the tomography, he does indeed have Alzheimer's. Jan was very scared, but it turned out to be just a joke. Anton wanted to show that Jan is doing wrong by his loved ones. Anton is willing to give Jan a week to resolve all issues. Until then, he asked Jetta not to visit him, claiming that this would make Jan want to come home. Jan doesn't necessarily have to stay in the hospital now, so he packed his things and left. First thing, he went to the funeral home to pick up the ashes and finally scatter it by the river, as his father-in-law had wanted. Jan was again noticed by the same girl with a camera. Jan decided to talk to her. It turned out that the girl's name is Julia, and she lives in a house in the forest. Julia complains that she has no luck with men. She wants her future husband to be decisive, but so far she's only met those who don't want to make any decisions and take responsibility. Having listened to Jan's story, Julia agreed to delete those provocative photos. Jan told her that he misses his daughter and son, but they don't see each other often these days. In the evening thanking Julia for everything, Jan left. He decided to spend the night in the barn. Here was someone he knew, the same goat who supposedly had dementia. Following the route of his father-in-law, Jan was about to do his duty to him. Soon Jan rented a small house. 
He was unaccustomed to not having his wife around to control him. Soon Peter and Lisbeth received a message from their father asking them to come to Germany and not to tell anyone about it. The brother and sister were shocked to learn that their father is in another country. Eric is wondering why Lisbeth is going to Germany with her brother. He is sure that the beloved is deceiving him. As promised, the brother and sister kept their plan a secret from the family. Lisbeth confronted her husband with the fact that she would do it her way anyway. Eric refused to let her go, but Lisbeth made it clear that she does not need his permission. When Peter and Lisbeth arrived in Germany, the father told them the whole truth. He can no longer bear Jetta's guardianship. Also Peter admitted that he is infertile. The wife showed him supposedly good test results, but he realized it was Photoshop. Since Eric had installed a location tracking app on Lisbeth's phone in advance, he and Jetta were going to find them. But Peter's wife refused to participate. Jan, his daughter and son are walking through the forest, having heart-to-heart -heart talks. Lisbeth confessed that she is very tired of Eric's control. Jan also decided to confess something and show the urn with ashes. Peter and Lisbeth were shocked to learn what their father had done. Peter did not like this idea, and he took the urn, intending to return it to the homeland. Peter also said the father and sister what he thought. In his opinion, they are to blame for this situation because nobody forced them to marry such people who strive to control everything. And now they don't want to take responsibility for their decisions and just run away. They are behaving as stupidly as donkeys in a corral. In a burst of emotion, Peter released someone's donkeys. Jan realized that his son is right. His reluctance to take responsibility led to him feeling unhappy in marriage. At night, the family gathered around a fire. Jan still does not know what to do. But he is sure that he does not want to repeat Aaron's fate. That's why Jan intends to follow Aaron's route to finish what he started. Both Dutch and German police arrived. Jan told Peter to leave, as the police would not arrest a man with Alzheimer's. Jan was taken to the station. During the interrogation, he pretended not to understand anything. Lisbeth confirmed that her father has Alzheimer's disease. Eric was also here already. He told Lisbeth that he is ready to continue their relationship subject to a list of conditions. After learning from the police that Eric spied on her using a mobile app, Lisbeth said that it's all over between them. Meanwhile, Jetta overheard a policeman talking on the phone with Anton, who said that Jan was actually feigning dementia just to avoid his wife. That's how Jetta found out the truth. From her husband's face, she understood that everything is really bad between them. All this time Jan was pretending just not to be with her. Jetta left in upset feelings. She talked to her son, not believing that her marriage had come to this. It turns out the husband is fed up with her control. That's why Jetta decided that they all together would fulfill Aaron's last will. Ilsa arrived and announced her pregnancy. Peter was happy, even though he understands that his wife was unfaithful to him. Lisbeth met her father, informing him that she left Eric. At that time Jetta shared her suspicions about Ilsa with the son. However, Peter knows very well that the wife deceived him. But he is ready to live in pretense for the sake of their family. Jetta is pondering over the recent events. For the first time she does not know what to do next. Jan came home as if nothing had happened. Jetta said she was sorry. They apologized to each other. Jan told her about his intention to follow Aaron's route. This time Jetta did not object, but out of habit she began to patronize of her husband again. Jan directly told his wife that he does not need her advice. He loves her very much, but at the same time they should each have their own personal space. After his journey, Jan wants to return to his wife and spend old age together. Jetta understands her husband's feelings, but at the same time she cannot accept that he wants to have some personal life. For Jetta this is unacceptable. Having heard her out, Jan just silently left and embarked on his journey. Life regained meaning for him, and he finally fulfilled Aaron's last will.